All right, welcome everyone. Doug here with the LincolnList.com, and I'd like to welcome you to today's lesson where I want to talk about the one thing that many traders continue to overlook when they enter a trade, and that one thing is range. Now, if you have watched any of my past videos, I've often gone through my strategy and talked about how range is such an important element of that. Now, for those that don't understand exactly what I'm talking about, the range of a stock is when I when I say that I mean what is the average range that stock has in it on a normal trading session so for example you may see a stock move either a plus one one dollar per share or minus one in a single day so that one dollar of movement is what that stocks typical daily range is. now this is minus any type of news binary event or earnings or something like that that could significantly and impact that range which we thought we've also talked about for that 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 type of news or information can often just disregard any kind of technical analysis but for the most part when I say range, I mean what does a stock move on an average daily basis? Now this is important to you because number one, you always want to try to get the very best entry that you can with a stock because if we've all been in the situation where you've chased a stock or done something and you realize when you chase a stock or you get a poor entry, it leads to you getting stopped out or getting shaken out of that trade a lot earlier. The second piece to understand about range and why it's so important is because this has a lot to do with the type of target that you're looking for on your exit. So this matters significantly to both the entry and the exit. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of trades that we've done here recently that discuss this a little bit more in detail because as most of you know, we do a lot of counter trend trading in the last videos I've talked about. I hate to use the word counter trending because I don't consider going against the grain going against a trend because much of this is what we're doing is going against euphoria and panic and I'll explain. So first I want to talk about Tesla. And if you look at Tesla here, this is the upper chart is the intraday five minute chart. And the one below would be the daily chart representing the, the price in the daily. So let's first take a look at the intraday. Now you open up today with, with some decent range in this stock where it's, it's trading in between these two places. Now when you look down here on the daily chart, you take a look at these, these candlesticks here. And for the last couple of days, you're looking at, like for this, this day, you got a low of about 3, 308 to 317 so you've got about eight to ten dollars in there again it, I always want to remind you that when you're doing stuff like this that I've said in past videos you don't have to be spot perfect to the penny you just need sort of an average so you're looking at each one of these candles every day is worth about seven and a half to ten dollars ten dollars being the highest but at least you're seeing over the last few days a positive seven dollar per share gain on Tesla or that's what it's delivering intraday for its range so when you get this breakout here from the open the opening price is going to be 337 ish we'll give it 337 or 337 and a half and then you get this really really nice breakout the stock rolls up to 342 now this move itself is about five to five and a half dollars there in range. So when you're looking at this stock trading from an average of seven to ten dollars or so, you're using up a big portion of that already being very you can see the time frames down here below. Being early in the morning and already consuming a big piece of that range now what this stock does is what so many strong stocks have a tendency to do is they need to back test a few of those levels so what you get is a nice little small drift back into the moving average and you'll see you start to get a retest of high of day here where this appears by all intents and purposes to be we'll go back there because that's what you would see in real time it appears to have all the elements of a very nice breakout trade for any of those that understand basic technical analysis you got a flag breakout a double top and you've got volume in this stock so everything looks like this could be a good breakout but on a deeper look when we start talking about range what we're seeing here is this stock is using about 70 to 80 percent of its range already 
Now, not only just that's just intraday. Now, not only that is a factor, but the bigger underlying factor is when you look at the daily chart below, this would make the fifth straight day right here. You see these green candles. This would make the fifth straight day that this stock has been green. So not only is the range top heavy for the intraday, this is also a stock that has moved roughly 40, 43 dollars over the last four or five days. So I hope you can kind of understand what I'm what I'm I'm talking about here. Even though this intraday pattern looks like a breakout and many new traders or struggling traders would buy this, you have to ask yourself the question, if I am to buy it, because we all kind of figure out what we want as an entry. But a lot of times we forget about we, what we want as a target. So if you're going to buy a stock that's already up, consuming 70 to 85 percent of its range, think about what you're asking of this stock. You're asking it to continue to do, deliver you another plus one or plus two on top of this plus $40 run it's had over the last few days. Now, that doesn't mean that this trade would not work if you took it. The purpose of this and what you should understand is as traders, we deal in probabilities. What would be if we were to take this trade 10 times, how many times out of that 10 would we win? Because there are going to be stocks that break range and go up all day and they'll go up five, six dollars for, for virtually no reason at all. You're always going to have those stocks to do it. Nothing is perfect. But we're talking about probabilities and over a span of many different trades. What is the likelihood of this thing continuing to deliver you more percent gains or more per share gains when it's already consumed a large portion of its range? So the better, the when, and when I say better, I mean the, the, the side you should be thinking on here is the short side rather than the long side. Now, maybe you're somebody who just decides, hey, I, I'm biased. I'm really biased and I don't want to short stocks or I don't want to short Tesla because it's a tough stock to short. The thing you have to understand is it doesn't matter whether you want to short or not. It matters to where maybe you want to buy because if you're looking at really wanting to own a stock like this, you want to get the best entry possible. So chasing it up here at these prices it's going to be more difficult for you to profit on that. Now, if you're talking about a long-term horizon, you're going to hold it for 10 years. None of this matters. But if you're a short-term trader or a momentum swing trader, these entry prices are critical to how much money you make as well as how much money that you're going to get in your profits. So to me, this became a short. And the reason that it did is not because I hate Tesla. I got something against Tesla or I don't believe in what Tesla is doing. I just think the price action and what you're asking the stock to do is too much because I had mentioned, if you've seen, maybe I'll put a couple of tags up here. The week before I mentioned what a great daily chart breakout this would be down here, right here where I got this line drawn. This 329s, 330 area would be a really strong breakout. So that's where the smart money is and the smart trader is on the breakout riding it. The people that are coming in now are very, very late to the party. And one way you can always figure out whether you're early, late or not is through that range. Now, this also works. And you can see this this particular short trade. We got a nice little small short trade. I didn't go heavy, but it got a nice pullback and covered into some of this. As I'm doing this video, it's still rolling over. Again, this is just normal price corrections in the market. It also works to the other side of this trade you're going to see something like a, a google and a couple of these other trades here where you see it in reverse where the stock flushes rather than going vertical or rather than going up to start the session now the same thing here in reverse is when you're looking at a stock like google you're looking at daily candles that match a tesla you're looking at a seven to ten dollar daily move inside of each intraday, barring again, you know, earning events, hit pieces, stuff like that can have a, a different impact on a stock. But you got a normal trading session today where you don't have those factors hanging over either one of these stocks. So what Google does is the reverse. It decides it wants to flush 
rather than go vertical. So you get all of this red bar and all of this panic selling. You can see the size of them. You can see the volume. You, you, you can see the speed in real time. But the same thing here is the stock opens up at roughly 997 and sells off quickly down to 982. So again, you are at the top of range. You are already down towards that, which in my opinion makes this a buy. Because if you're trying to short down here, you're putting yourself in the hole, just like you would be buying up there. Even though if a chart pattern said, hey, this looks really good, what traders don't often look at is the range, because even if it was to break down a little bit lower, you'd have to ask yourself outside of earnings, when does this stock ever go down 15 to $20? You know, there's not going to be many of those circumstances. Again, that doesn't mean that, like we said with Tesla, it doesn't mean that it won't continue to go down. None of it's ever going to be perfect. But when we deal with probabilities, and you're talking about if you did 10 of these, what's the right side of the trade to be on? So again, you can see the P&L over there. This was a good dip buy. We picked up some. It wasn't down here at the bottom. Waited for just a little bit of a, a pickup here on this candle. Got it in around the nine, 984s and, and, and caught a nice little wave here. But here's also the thing that we talk about when we say entry. Once this stock has retraced a significant piece of that initial flush, or just like you're seeing Tesla come down and, and root back test some of that, that's when a lot of traders decide to go in that direction. So you've got people that are deciding on this candle and this candle here, this is the time you want to buy the bounce. No, the bounce already happened. So when we're talking about these range, the closer that you are, when that thing is at its range, the closer you are to the top side or the bottom side of that range, going in the opposite direction, if I'm not confusing you, will make that a much easier trade. So remember, it's all about the range and if you continue to try to go in the direction when the range is already heavy in one side it's going to be difficult even if the technical chart looks good it's going to be difficult in most cases to make that work uh, I'll show you another one here Nvidia was was another one uh, same thing as as Google you got a heavy flush on this one today you know down down at the bottom of its range opening up 146 trading down into 141 so that's a you know four or five dollars a day. That's that's a pretty good range. So you can see that Google and Nvidia took off to the downside and had a really really good flush. Got up got into their range, and then of course you get a bounce. Tesla was the other side of that. So the important thing that you understand about what this lesson is is before you. Whatever your strategy is, that doesn't make any difference if you're a short seller, you're a flag breakout, you're a momentum trader, or whatever your bias may be towards a specific company. Take a moment to, to calculate what the daily range is. You don't need to be spot perfect, but you just need to be within, you know, if, it, if it's a cheaper stock, 50 to 60 cents, a bigger stock like something like this, a dollar or so, just so you have an idea in the, in the top of your head how far that stock will make a move in a single day. Once you start to press the upper realm, if it's going up, if you're the upper realm of that range, or if it's flushing in this case, and you're really testing lower areas of that range, that will help you understand what side of the trade that you will be on. Now, to kind of skip forward and, and dig a little deeper, much of this is just not buying just because of the range, which I've talked about before. Um, you'd have to look at some of the support resistance numbers, some other areas that, that may coincide with this to increase your chances of being success, successful on the trade. But it's one thing at a time. And this is what every strategy has is there are multiple components that make the level of that trade quality, uh, d d judges the quality of that trade. So in these cases, you know, you, it wasn't just because it was down on the range. It had good volume at whole, certain whole numbers at certain support and resistance. But to save time and, and talk about just this particular lesson, we want to look at range when we make that stock, when we make that trade. So if that stock, you want to buy that stock and it has an average daily range of about $2 and it's currently up $1.75 or $1.80, that's going to be hard to make a breakout trade work like that because you're probably not going to get higher than that $2 or that $2.20. Now, maybe there's going to be some cases that it will, like I said, but overall, over a course of 10, 15 of those trades, it's going to be really difficult to get more out of that. It's just going to naturally slow down because that's the behavior of the stock. So the lesson, 
take care of the range, pay attention to it before you enter. This will help you get better entry prices and help you not get stopped out and ultimately make you a little bit more money. If you ever need help trading, feel free to visit the LincolnList.com and join our live trade room and see us trade every day. Until the next lesson, thanks for watching. Talk to you then.